Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I thought about drawing a dragon, but I, I don't really know what happened guys. I really don't know. So I started the drawing, I started getting some line work in. I had this idea of like a, a type of dragon that I wanted to paint or to draw. I wasn't even sure where I was going to go with this, but I just knew I wanted to draw something that was really dark and that had you know, a, a bit of red color to it. I wanted to add a little bit of color. Because a lot of my work doesn't have any color to it. So I wanted just a little bit of color to try something a little bit different. And as I was painting this, I thought to myself, okay, so how do I want to, how do I want to go about doing this? Do I want to do all the little scales? Do I want to um, you know, just go right for the details? Do I want to just kind of block things in? But the first thing I did is I just started getting some line work down, trying to get the, you know, the general shape of things because... Originally, with some of my artwork, I come from you know a background with a lot of line work um, that I started practicing a lot. But originally, I was really good with values, and then I got into a lot of line work. So now I've got to get back into practicing my values a lot more, and you know, getting the shading and all that right. But as I started doing it, I just got the airbrush that is one of the brush um, selections that I'm using for the program, and I just kind of airbrushed in some areas of it with some with some blacks and some grays and just trying to get used to using the program changing the opacity and I was going to use the autofill like it's like a little bucket icon that you can click on and I was going to use the little autofill for that but I was like eh, I'll, I'll do it the hard way and you know just add a little bit more value to it and use the airbrush with it and I wanted to make something really dark but I noticed that like as I was doing it, it started looking like this really weird alien looking spider thing. I wasn't really sure. I originally thought about it. it was changing a lot from that, but I was kind of liking where I was going with it. And it's giving me some other ideas for uh, you know, some other drawings that are like this that are dark. And so anyways, as I was doing this, I kept adding more little details. And I wanted to get in to working on doing the highlights and the lighting on subjects because I wanted the lighting for this to be lit up from underneath um, so that it could light up the bottom part of the uh, face and as you can notice in this uh, painting or drawing or whichever it is you call it um, the eyes were really big and so it kinda has this really weird look to it but um, I, I like it but uh Anyways, there's a couple of times as I was doing it, I started laughing because some of the proportions were really, um, they were a bit off from what I was thinking about doing, and so I just, I just kept going with it, and I, I wasn't too worried, and I, uh, just kept adding some things, and at the top portion of the digital work that I was doing, um, I, I wanted to make the top part dark to really make the face stand out because the face is really dark. And I want to add some, uh, just a little bit of highlights to it on the bottom part of the chin, um, a little bit near the eyes. And as I was doing it, I got into adding some details to the eyes. And I, I added these, like, a little bit of neon um, lines that go up through the face, which you'll see later on in the painting. And I added those into it um, just to try to make the face stand out more because I made the upper part of it really dark. I noticed that the, like, like the little arms or the wings or whatever you would call it, they um, they needed a little bit too. So I added some highlights to that as well. While I was doing the painting, it, it reminded me of the Lord of the Rings movie when I watched that when I was younger. The scene in it where the big demon guy, he comes out and he tries to fight Gandalf and he um, there's that big scene where they they have to jump over and. It kind of looks like that guy, but no, definitely not as awesome as that. That that, that character in that movie was pretty awesome. And that was a Fellowship of the Ring, wasn't it? That was, what, 2000? 2001? It's already been, what, 17, 18 years ago? I can't believe it's been that long ago. But anyways, um, sometimes I'll be making a drawing. I'll have an idea that comes to me. And I don't really realize that I was inspired by it or that, you know, that's what made me do it in the first place. Until later on after I've done the drawing or the painting and I look back on it and I kind of see you know, what I was doing in the first place. And so, 
yeah, um, this digital stuff is a lot, a lot of fun for me. Um, really get into it, and what I like about it is how I don't have to switch from, you know, using a, a one brush to another brush. From I don't have to worry about you know, smearing, you know, graphite and everything, or worrying about ink getting all over the place. I don't have to worry about the the cost of supplies so much. The initial cost of starting digital is very high, but in the long run, you're going to save a lot of money because. You don't have to keep using more paper and more brushes and everything, and that's. I felt like that was something that was holding me back a little bit. Was I was worried about making a mistake because I'm going through so much paper, you know, especially my more expensive paper that is more archival and you know, it costs a few dollars per sheet of paper. And you know, I was afraid of making a mistake. It's like I have to throw that away. To where now it doesn't really matter. I can I can do a quick doodle. I can do something detailed and I don't have to worry about making mistakes because you just got the control Z and you can just undo a line but I try to avoid doing that because I want to focus on trying to get better and I don't I don't want to completely rely on the tool to be a good artist I want to rely on my skills and what I'm able to make in the traditional sense of not being able to undo try to try to undo lines um, way less than what I've been doing and try to you know, keep improving on that and anyways in this painting I started adding some flames and for the flames I used like a little um, it's one of the tools or brushes that is on the program that, that I'm using for uh, for Krita I'll leave a link in the description of the video so you can check that out but it's a brush where it um it smudges and it like smears thing across. So as I was doing the flames, I just used that and I, I smudged and smeared things and swirled it all around. But before I did that, I just laid in you know, the basic colors, the the red, like a it's like kind of like a burgundy red. It's more um, it's like a really dark red, and then a red, um, a dark orange, a light orange, a yellow, and then a white. And there's a couple of spots I had. To, just a little, a little hint of blue to really make it stand out more and then it kind of just went through there and I kept smearing and smudging things around and it really helped with the effect and to give the illusion of there actually being flames there to give it a more realistic look than uh, you know, just plain brush strokes of you know, lines over and over there that's something you want to avoid when you're trying to do paint you don't want just a lot of little you know, brush strokes Unless you're trying to be you no know, Van Gogh, but um, and speaking of him, uh, I tried painting like that once. It's a lot more difficult than you think. I mean, it, it looks easy, but then you actually try it, and it's uh, it's really hard. But um, when you're trying to you know, paint something and block something in, you want to just kind of smear everything all. Just just get the proportions and and the idea on the paper first, and then work your way up towards doing the details. You don't want to start with doing details at the very beginning. Because then you're going to get you know, bogged down and you'll be focusing on those little details too much. If you have any suggestions of what you want me to make in digital art, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Until then, thank you for watching and you have a good day.